Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Bavaria for EU4 1.33 France. So Bavaria is a nation that can be very easily formed with one of the three Bavarian miners, Munich, Ingolstadt, and Landshut. And for the purposes of this guide, we are going to be starting as the nation of Landshut, although this strategy is relevant and can be done with either of these three guys right here. My previous Bavaria guide, we started as Munich, so this time I thought I would switch it up and start as Landshut. And we'll be forming Bavaria in no time. Landshut starts off with this 454 guy, the best out of the three Wittelsbach rulers in Munich. Munich, Ingolstadt, and Landshut, and the Wittelsbach dynasty is also present in Denmark, which rules over Norway and Sweden, so we do have a potential for some PUs there. Bavaria is very easily formed in the national decisions as soon as we own these provinces right here in the two other Bavarian miners, and pretty soon, a couple of months after the game starts, we'll get an event where we get PUCBs on both of these guys, and we'll be able to PU them very easily. Bavaria is a very underrated and slept on nation, in my opinion, with our ability to PU and subjugate a massive amount of electors in the HRE, become an elector ourselves, and then even go on to PU Austria and various other nations in Europe and go on to achieve European and even worldwide dominance. And before we begin, if you enjoy this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot, and if you want to see more guides or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Let's take a look at what we need to do as Bavaria. Alright, alright, so here we are as Lance Hut, and like I said, this guide is relevant for Ingolstadt and Munich as well. So you can start with either of these three nations, whichever one you want to. But for this guide, we're starting as Lance Hut. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our estates and summon the Diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're going to give the clergy religious state and clerical advisory council, along with religious diplomats. We're going to give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors. And we're going to give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebted to the burghers. Then we're going to see land. Now to kickstart our mission tree, at least this branch right here, which is the most important one, we need to be Bavaria and have our army 100% of our force limit, which we will do very easily once we PU Munich and Ingolstadt right here. And you will see how that'll happen with the help of the events we're going to get pretty soon. But first we need to get our army in order, so we're going to take our army right here and delete this cavalry regiment right here. We can see that our force limit is 9, so we will be hiring the free company as well right here in our capital, and we will also be hiring a general. Now it's time to get at least one advisor, preferably a Diplo Rep or Improve Relations level 1 guy. I do have a level 1 Improve Relations guy, but if you have a Diplo Rep level 1 guy, he's better. But I'm gonna take this guy right here. We also have a free merchant, one of them is collecting in Vienna, and the other one for now, he can just go to the Rhineland and collect right there, but you can also tell him to establish communities since we aren't making that much from trade right here in the early game. And we're not gonna be rivaling anyone just yet right here at the start. Start. This is because a lot of these guys can easily ally Austria at the start, which might ruin our start right here. So, after a couple of months pass, if one of these guys over here has allied Austria, it's better to just restart since it's only been a couple of months. We don't want them to get strong allies, so we can PU them super, super easily. But now it's time for us to look for some allies as well. Preferably, we're gonna be the ones that ally Austria. And let's see right here, in my case, I am able to Royal Mary Austria, and with that, I've locked in a diplomatic slot with them, and once I improve with them a little bit, scornfully insult their rival, I will be able to ally them. You should be striving to do the same thing. We can see their rivals right here, the Ottomans, France, and the Pope, so I am gonna scornfully insult the Ottomans right here, right off the bat, and that enabled us to ally Austria slightly more. Now we're also going to improve with them once we can. Now it's time to unpause and wait for the event where we get PUCBs on Ingolstadt and Munich. At this point you can look for some other allies as well, preferably electors. And let's see which electors are willing to ally me in my case, and that is Saxony, Köln, and Mainz, which is awesome. They're pretty good allies to have. So I will ally Saxony right here, and once I'm able to, I'll also ally Mainz. The electors you don't want to ally are the Palatinate and Köln, at least at the start. So don't ally these two guys at the start, even if you can. And there we go, about a month has passed, I've allied Saxony and Mainz, and now I can ally Austria as well. This is perfect. And once you've gotten your alliances in order, and it's like December or January, you can check the other two guys' as alliances. And of course, if you've allied Austria, they 
shouldn't be able to. So let's check Ingolstadt. Awesome. In my case, they're only allied to Rothenburg. And let's check Munich. They're only allied to Memmingen. So this is sort of the situation you want to have in your case too. Like I said, if one of these guys have allied Austria, you're better off restarting. It's only been a month. Because you've allied two electors at this point, they may be voting for you. And then you will be able to take the mission Imperial Ambition. We gain prestige, diplomats, and improved relations. Awesome. And this is the event that we've been waiting for, the Bavarian Succession, where we gain Restoration of Union CBs on the other two guys. Perfect. And there we go. Now we can just simply declare war on whichever of these two guys is weaker. It doesn't matter in what order you do it in. So just wait for your armies to get their morale up, basically the free company that you've hired. And at this point, because they've already gotten their alliances in order, you can go ahead and rival both of those guys, Munich and Ingolstadt. The third rival I recommend is either Regensburg or Salzburg, preferably Salzburg. And once you've gotten your army morale up, it is time to declare your first war. And if you're playing with Lanza, just like me, the first nation that I recommend attacking is Munich. This is because Ingolstadt right here starts off without an heir. Now, in my case, they have gotten an heir, but in your case, they may still not have an heir, which means that you might just get a random PU over them while you're fighting Munich. So that's why I think it's better to fight Munich first because they do have an heir and you could just randomly get these guys. So it is time to declare your first war. Of course, if Ingolstadt is weaker than Munich, then you can go for them. But Munich is preferable. Of course, you're going to declare with Restoration of Union and simply go and PU them. This shouldn't be a difficult war. They should have one or two small allies. In my case, they have Memmingen as an ally and Passau is their vassal. Now, after you've started your war, of course, you can fire the Improved Relations or Diplorep guys since we've already gotten our alliances in order and you can get a Morale, Discipline or Fort Defense level 1 guy. I'm gonna get this discipline guy. And now I have just been elected emperor of the Holy Roman Empire since the Austrian guy died, but this is very, very unrealistic. You will become emperor, sure, but that'll happen later down the line. So I'm just gonna alt F4 right here because it would be very unrealistic for this guy for me to become emperor after just one year. I would be way more powerful in my game right here rather than your guys' games, so the guide wouldn't be relevant. So let me just alt F4 real quick. And there we go, the war is done. It was slightly more annoying than it needed to be because they did hire Kandatieri from Augsburg, but I did manage to siege down Munich and their subject Passau. And of course, what we are going to do here is we're going to select Union with Munich and we're also going to take the province of Passau for ourselves and we're going to get all their money. And boom, that's our first war done. We have one subject, Munich or Ingolstadt, depending on who you declared on first. Now it's time to go back to our nation, chill for like a month or two, and then just declare our next war with whoever is left. And by the way, during this war, I did hire two more infantry regiments. We are over first limit, but it's fine. And there we go. Now that a month has passed, I will be declaring my next war. It's versus Ingolstadt. Once again, restoration of Union. Once again, they shouldn't have any strong allies. And if you get Munich loyal, they'll help you out too. And you can get Munich loyal slowly by improving relations or quickly by developing one of their provinces. Just like this. There we go. They're loyal and they'll help out. And during your second war, you may have gotten enough favors to call in one of your two elector allies. I can call in Mainz now, which I will. And there we go. My second war is done as well. I just pieced out their allies and we're going to do the same thing we did with Munich, but with Ingolstadt now. Of course, once again, union with Ingolstadt and we're going to take all their money. And that's that. Now we own all the provinces, either directly or indirectly, that we need to form Bavaria. And we can just simply go into our decisions and take the decision to change to Bavaria. Bavaria. And just like that, we automatically inherited the two guys that we got as junior partners, all of their lands, all of their armies and stuff like that. And now we're Bavaria. You can do it in maybe even three years if you're quick enough and if they don't have any allies. But the usual time is around four or five years. I did it in seven here because I did have slight problems with Munich. But now that we've viewed those two guys and we are Bavaria, we can chill out for about a year or two and stabilize before moving on with our conquests. During this point, you can improve relations with outraged countries with allies, and you can spy on one of Salzburg and Regensburg. Of course, at this point, you do also need to complete the mission United and Strong Bavaria. Basically, build your army up to force limit, and I just need one more regiment for that, which I will do right now. And once you do get that regiment that you need, one or two probably, you will be able to take the mission where you get some prestige from land battles and minus 15% CCR for 20 years. Now, we need to work on this mission, which is basically owning 10 provinces in the three Bavaria areas and one of Oberfalt's Salzburg or Regensburg. 
Regensburg. That's one of these three provinces right here. It's probably going to be Salzburg, since Regensburg is a free city, and the Palatinate may have strong allies, in my case, Austria. So we're getting ready for our next war, which is Salzburg. That's why we're spying on them. After this war, you will have bigger loans, and you can take new burger loans to pay off your regular loans if you have any. I did have three regular loans, I paid off two, and now I can pay off my last regular loan, and with the extra money, I will build some buildings. Of course, we will want to build marketplaces first, but we don't have any centers of trade right at the start, even though we will get one in Munich with this mission right here, which we'll be doing later. So you can definitely build a church in Munich or something like that in Ingolstadt too. Why not? They're not high value trade goods, so you can totally build churches in them. And as you can see at this point, my elector allies are voting for me. Now the trick here is, we're gonna inherit one of these guys' elector slot, and we're also gonna be subjugating two more of them. So later, it won't be a problem becoming emperor at all. Of course, you could have gotten super super lucky like I did before I alt f 4 and get elector in like 1445. I've never seen that, so that's why I had to alt f 4 there, boys. Once you do get tech 4 in all categories, and that should be during your initial wars, you can definitely definitely activate the Encourage Development State Edict in Munich, which will become your capital after you form Bavaria, by the way, no matter who you start with, and you can bump it up to around 30 dev to speed up the spawning of the Renaissance, to tick off the Age Objective, and to help us accomplish this mission as well. So go ahead and dev Munich a bit. And once a little bit of time has passed, it is time to declare our first Conquest War, and it will be versus Salzburg. Now in my case here, Salzburg is allied to Regensburg, which is actually really good, since it will be tough for us to conquer Regensburg since they're a free city. We'll either have to declare on one of their allies and annex them without co-belligerenting them, or we'll have to wait for Austria to get into some stupid war that we won't be involved in, so maybe they won't defend Regensburg. Now, if you're in a situation like this, you could totally declare on Salzburg and not annex Salzburg, and instead annex Regensburg, which is one of the strategies, but I won't be doing that since they're also allied to Augsburg here, and I'll be doing that later by declaring on Augsburg, but actually annexing Regensburg. So, you're probably gonna be fighting Salzburg just like me. So go ahead and declare they shouldn't have any strong allies. I am gonna call in Mainz and Saxony here. And like always when fighting in the HRE, white piece guys that are next to you that you're gonna wanna fight quickly and just take stuff from guys that are further away. I'm gonna white piece Regensburg, but take stuff from Constance. During this point, I have also bumped up Munich to 30 dev and we're pretty close to getting the Renaissance. Now there is a high chance that in your game as well, the Palatinate will be allied to Austria. This is something that does happen pretty quickly. So preemptively, we're gonna start creating favors with Austria to get them to break their alliance with the Palatinate. And now that my war with Salzburg is done, I will be full annexing them. You should be doing the same. And just like that, we should be able to take the mission Expand Bavaria, except we won't. Not until we're ready to declare on the Palatinate, because we get a Restoration of Union CB on the Palatinate. That means we'll make them our junior partner. Now, you can check their alliances at this point, and check your alliances and stuff like that to see if we're ready to declare, and in my case, obviously, they're allied to Austria, which is super unfortunate, but not that rare. So that's why I'm not gonna take this mission now and let the CB tick. Instead, I'm only gonna take the mission when I I'm ready to declare on the planet, and that's gonna be in quite a while here in my case, since I will need 50 favors with Austria to make them break an alliance. So don't take that mission unless you're ready. When you look a little something like this, you should try linking up with the Pope as well. That's why I'm gonna start improving with him now. At this point, since your merchant in the Ryland isn't really doing much, you can totally tell him to establish communities. And at this point, it's not a bad idea to get another elector ally as well, in the hopes that we will get elected HRE Emperor. Right now, Mainz and Saxony are voting for me, which is awesome, and two guys are voting for Austria, two guys for the Palatinate, so that means once Austria here dies, I'll be the next emperor. And you should totally ally more electors, like I said. Let's see in my case right here, we can ally Köln, Trier, and Brandenburg, everyone except for the Palatinate, which hates us, but like I said, still, we won't be allying Köln, but you can totally go for someone like Trier and Brandenburg. I am gonna go for Brandenburg here in my case. And right now I'm allied to Saxony, Brandenburg, Mainz, and Austria. A pretty standard alliance. You may have the Pope as well, in your case. Once you get Admin Tech 5, you will be able to take your first idea group, and for your first idea group as Bavaria, I recommend taking diplomatic ideas. This is gonna help us out because we are gonna have quite a few subjects, especially over here in the HRE. The diplomats will help us improve relations with outrage countries so we don't get coalitioned. The diplomatic relations are great, once again for the subjects, improve relations for coalitions, province war score cost will enable us to take more, and this, the lowered impact on stability from diplomatic actions, will enable us to make and break royal marriages in the hopes of getting our dynasty on other nations thrones and getting more PUs. Overall, a great idea set if you plan on being emperor and playing in the HRE. So diplomatic ideas for your 
first idea group. For your tier 2 government reform, it's honestly not that simple as Bavaria. Of course, we are sort of struggling with manpower right now, but pretty soon we'll be becoming emperor and the manpower from being emperor is insane. And this plus 15% won't really be doing too much. Sure, if you don't care about being emperor, you should go for strength and noble privileges, but in this guide, we will be focusing heavily on being emperor all the time and staying emperor, so we don't really need strength and noble privileges. Sure, the plus 10% tax isn't strong at all, but it could help us out a bit in the early game. So, if you're already Emperor, you might want to take Curtail Noble Privileges. If you're not, you might want to take Strengthen and swap to Curtail later. We won't want to get the Nobles too influential after all. So, in this guide, it's pretty much your choice whether you're gonna go with strength and noble privileges or curtail noble privileges. And that's pretty much the same situation for any nation that's gonna be HRE Emperor. I am gonna get strength and noble privileges now, but later, once I get elected Emperor, I might swap to curtail. Now, after a little bit of time has passed, it is time for your fourth war. And it's gonna be either the war where you pew the Palatinate, which I'm not doing like I said, because they're still allied to Austria, and a diplomat of mine just left. That was the guy from the mission, so I will need to create favors again with Austria. I'm at 23 right now, I need to get them up to 50. But like I was saying, your fourth war is either gonna be pewing the Palatinate, conquering Augsburg, or fighting a Regensburg ally to conquer Regensburg because they're a free city. In my case, it's gonna be with Regensburg. So I am gonna declare on Augsburg right here and not co-belligerent Regensburg because then Austria would join simply to conquer them. Annexing a nation without co-belligerenting them, especially a free city, is gonna give us a lot of aggressive expansion. So do be careful when fighting a war like this. And when you beat up whichever ally of Regensburg you declared on, of course, you're simply gonna do this right here and annex Regensburg. Don't annex the other guy, just Regensburg. That's it. I'm gonna get money and war apps and that's done. We don't wanna get too much aggressive expansion, like I said. Of course, if you're fighting the Palatinate, you're simply gonna enforce your union over them and that's that. But your fourth war, you should look like this and have the Palatinate as a subject or own Regensburg or own Augsburg. Of course, another way to make the Palatinate break their alliance with a strong nation, and that goes pretty much for whichever nation, is fighting another ally of theirs and making them break their alliance in the peace deal. So that's why, in my case, I've spied on Württemberg right here. I am gonna declare on them, and in this war, I'm gonna make the Palatinate break their alliance with Austria. You can do that, or you can make them curry favors. It doesn't matter. And I'm gonna call in all my boys. This is just a phony war, and I probably won't take anything from anyone here. And there we go, I'll simply make the Palatinate and their alliance with Austria. The reason I declared this war. Of course, in my scenario here, because I'm waiting for the Palatinate truce to expire, I'm not doing anything. But, like I said, you should be doing the three wars that I mentioned right at the start. Either fighting Regensburg and taking them, fighting Augsburg and taking them, or PUing the Palatinate. I have done only one of those wars so far, but you've probably done all three by now. Depending on the truces and alliances, of course. For a first stage ability, you should take justified wars. And now that my truce with the Palatinate is up, and at the same time I've also curried 50 favors with Austria, so it took about the same time whether I made them break an alliance or curry favors, I will finally be taking this mission right here, where we gain a restoration of Union CB on the planet, and I will be declaring on the planet with that CB. Like I said, in your case, if you've gotten lucky and they haven't allied anyone strong, particularly Austria, you've already done this. But if not, you're also doing this at this time. So it's time to go and PU the Palatinet. And just like that, I have enough war score to PU the Palatinet, and you will do the same and take as much money as you can. And boom, just like that, the Palatinet, an elector, is our junior partner. Now we can take the mission Unite the Vittels box, which gives us perma claims on the North Rhine area right here and the Tyrol area down here, but it also triggers an event for Austria where Austria chooses to give the Palatinate's electorship to us. And just like that, the Palatinate is not an elector anymore, and instead, we ourselves are an elector. Of course, we will be voting for ourselves. And just like that, at this point, we have four electors voting for us. Ourselves and your three other allies, which are most likely Brandenburg, Mainz, and Saxony. And because the Palatinate is a small nation and we really didn't get a lot of AE from PUing them at all, it is time to move on with our next war as soon as we can. And our next war is gonna be with another elector that we don't have a holdover, the nation of Köln. Of course, we did get a claim on one of their provinces over here, their capital. Now rarely they might have lost this to someone, in which case you can simply use the claims bordering claims age ability to chain claim all the way to other provinces that they may own. But after the planet war, it's time to declare on Köln as soon as you can or as soon as you want to. And I'll be declaring on them almost immediately after I ended my planet at war. 
Now, you might be wondering why we're fighting Koln that's so far away from us and a nation that we're not even connected to and instead of these guys over here, which we also have claims on. But don't worry, everything is going according to plan so far. You should be fighting Koln after the Palatinate. And of course, once you've beaten up Koln, here's what you're gonna do. Of course, if we go into our missions over here and if we take a look at this Sway Koln mission right here, someone needs to own the province of Koln or have it as a subject. And we can see right here that if we complete the mission, not only do we get a Restoration of Union CB on Brandenburg, but also the event the Koln second the Geniture happens, which we do want to happen. So. When you're ready to peace out Koln, we're simply gonna make them our vassal and take all their money. And boom, just like that, we have two subjects, one of which we replaced as an elector and another one which is also an elector and they are gonna vote for us when they like us. Now, just like the Palatinate mission, don't take this mission right here unless you're ready to PU Brandenburg. And at this point, your AE might be high or you may be still allied to Brandenburg, just like I am. So, after you subjugate Koln, it is time to dissolve your alliance with Brandenburg. And only once our truce with them is up, then we'll take the mission Sway Koln. But, in the meantime, we can focus on fighting some nations down here or just chilling and building up our nation. For your second idea group as Bavaria, I recommend taking offensive ideas. Ideas. This will help us out have stronger armies and the siege ability is a necessity in 1.33. So offensive for your second idea group. Now of course after you've subjugated Koln you could fight some of these guys down here but Brandenburg is a slightly bigger nation and if we PU them AE is gonna be pretty high. So you might want to chill until you're ready to PU Brandenburg. By the way during all this time you should still be currying as much favors as you can with Austria. That's because we're preparing to fight them too and as you all know Austria can get some pretty strong allies. In my case here, I'm probably gonna make them break their alliance with Castile. And there we go, I just made Austria break their alliance with Castile. For your tier 3 government reform, you should take centralized bureaucracy. And the Austrian Emperor died and I have been elected Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire because as you can see, four nations here voted for us. Well, now Trier, so five maybe. But our subject Koln, we ourselves are voting for us and our two elector allies are also voting for us, which is nothing out of the ordinary. Once you have the Palatinate and Koln, you will become the HRE. Emperor. And now we just got a lot more powerful, which is awesome. Of course, once you do become Emperor, you will be able to take the mission Charlemagne's Legacy, which you should do. When you do become Emperor, you should build up your army. And once your truce with Brandenburg is up and you're ready to declare her, in my case right here, unfortunately, I do still have a royal marriage with them, which I will break. It is what it is. Not a big deal. You will be able to take the mission Sway Koln, which gives your restoration of Union CB on Brandenburg, where you should choose the first option, where people from our family, the Wittelsbox, will also become rulers of Koln as well. And there we go. But now, but now that we've taken that mission, we can go ahead and declare a restoration of Union War on Brandenburg. And it's time to go and get another elector under our control. Also, once you build up five buildings in Munich, you will be able to take the mission Develop Munich, where you get a level one center of trade. Awesome. And of course, once you full occupy Brandenburg, by this point, you're super strong. You're simply going to select the option Union with Brandenburg and take all their money to get them as our junior partner as well. Once you subjugate Brandenburg, you will be able to take the mission Tame Brandenburg, which you should do. And once you do that as well, you should break your alliance with Austria, just like that. Now, we don't like Austria anymore because, well, you guessed it. We're gonna PU them as well. But now it's time to go back and chill and let aggressive expansion die down before preparing to take on Austria to take these provinces right here from them. At this point, pretty much everyone except Bohemia should be voting for you. You may have even gotten lucky and Bohemia likes you, in which case everyone will vote for you. After this point, it's pretty hard to lose the emperorship. Once you break your alliance with Austria, it's not a bad idea to find another strong ally as well. In my case, I've just royal married France and I can ally them as well. Options will include Poland, Hungary, France, Castile and Denmark. Try to get some of those guys after you've broken your alliance with Austria. Of course, if you can pass imperial reforms, do it. And once our truce with Austria is up, it's time to move along with our wars where we're going to be taking these three provinces in Tyrol right here from Austria. That is a requirement for us to get the PUCB on them after that. And by this point, you should be fairly strong. You should have all your subjects and one or more of the strong allies that you've gotten after you broke your alliance with Austria should be willing to help you out. In my case here, France would help me. So 
I'm simply gonna declare for Intel right here and go and fight Austria. By this point, they're not strong, but of course it all depends on everyone's situation. They might have a pew over Hungary, they might have a pew over Bohemia, they might have other strong allies. Either way, this is your most likely next war. Of course, if Austria is super, super powerful, and if they've expanded a lot and have a lot of subjects, you might be fighting some of these guys right here instead of Austria. When fighting this war, it's a good idea to make Austria's allies break their alliance with Austria when piecing them out. I just made bodies and their alliance with Austria. And once you've gotten enough war score to make Austria give you just these three provinces right here, it's time to peace out. So just take Intel, Eshtal, and Lienz, no money, no war ups, nothing else, just those three provinces in your first war with Austria. Additionally, I did make Hungary end their alliance with Austria too, and now they're only allied to Naples. And after you do this, you will be able to take the mission Claim Tyrol, which will give you a Restoration of Union CB on Austria as well. Of course, just like our previous two Restoration of Union CBs, we're not gonna be taking the mission until we're ready to fight them. So now, it's time to chill a bit and let aggressive expansion die down, and maybe fight some other small nations that we have claims on. Of course, by taking these provinces from Austria right here, we have acquired our first gold mine in Intal. We will be focusing on devving it up to 10. And here's another lucky situation you might find yourself in. The Burgundian inheritance just happened and Burgundy chose to become my junior partner. Now of course this could be a very very cool thing that could happen in your game or it could be literally insignificant because in my case Burgundy is down to just these three provinces right here and the three up in Holland. Now if you get this and they look like they do in 1444, then that's awesome. You've just gotten a lot more powerful. But in my case, it doesn't matter too much since they're so tiny and they also have pretenders. But that's another potential PU that you could hope for or try and get by improving relations with Burgundy. And there's the horse event where Marie falls off a horse and I instantly inherit Burgundy. So even though they're not that big, it's free land and I'm not gonna say no to it. But like I said, you may have been even more lucky and you may have gotten them in their 1444 size which would be awesome. Of course, if that event doesn't happen and if the Imperial incident triggers, you should choose to keep your PU over Burgundy, even though it may lead to a war with France. You will be strong enough to defeat France. While you're waiting for your truce with Austria to expire to PU them, it is time to continue expanding in the provinces that you have claims on. In my case right here, I'm gonna be revoking Nuremberg's free city status because we are the HRE Emperor. Nuremberg is a super, super nice province, very high def formulas, it produces paper, and it's a center of trade, so we can go and fight Nuremberg. And there we go, I'll call in all my boys except for France and it's time to declare. You can fight whichever nation you feel like out of the ones you have claims on. You could go and finish off Tyrol or fight these guys to connect your subjects and yourself. Now if you end up fighting Bohemia of course you can take the gold province in Cheb as well to get two gold mines but if you don't feel like it and honestly there's no need because we already have one and we don't want a lot more aggressive expansion it is cool to just leave it alone and let Bohemia do their thing. And there we go now that I defeated Nuremberg I will be annexing them. This is a high def province, you will get a lot of AE, so you can pick and choose who to conquer, like I said earlier. Of course, if you revoke any free city statuses in the nations around you that you'll conquer, you will want to give someone else a free city status instead. And you can do that right here in the Emperor Actions, Grand Free City Status, and let's see, Mulhouse is eligible, so I will give it to them. Of course, by this point in the game, you'd be super rich and you should be focusing a lot on building up your nation. And once your truce with Austria is up, it is time to go and take the mission Claim Tyrol, where we gain a restoration of Union CB on Austria. If you were lucky, they might also have Hungary as a junior partner, which means you'll get Hungary as well, and if you were super lucky, they might also have Bohemia as a junior partner, which means you'll get them as a junior partner as well. And if you were wildly, unimaginably lucky, they may also have Burgundy if you haven't got them, which means in this war, you're about to get one junior partner for sure, which is Austria, or up to even four, which would be insane. Bavaria's potential is crazy, don't sleep on them boys. So, once your truce with Austria is up, simply go and declare a restoration of Union War on them. Of course, once again, if you're not strong enough for this, you can fight some small guys right here, 
until you're ready to do so. And once you've beaten up Austria, you will of course enforce your union over them. This will give you quite a bit of aggressive expansion depending on how big they are of course, and this is the pretty standard size they should be when you PU them. And a risk of a coalition might happen as we can see right here. Some nations over here might join a coalition with me, but I do have a truces with a bunch of them and no strong nations are in it. So either way, if you've been playing a little bit carefully, there should be no risk of PUing them right here. So we'll enforce our union over them and take all their money. And that's our war with Austria done. After you've PU'd Austria, you should have four to eight subjects, seven of which will be junior partners. Of course, after this, you will be able to take the mission Union with Austria, which gives you perma claims on some areas in Venice and in the Netherlands. And by around the 1490s, if you got lucky with alliances, or by around the 1500s, if you didn't, your game and your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as any of the three Bavarian miners, Munich, Ingolstadt, or in our case, Landshut right here, waited for the event to PU the other two, PU'd them, and formed the nation of Bavaria through our decisions right here and then went on to advance down our mission tree by conquering the nations around us mainly Salzburg and Regensburg one of which is a free city and then we went on to pew the Palatinate and replace them as an elector in the HRE then we went on to subjugate Köln and make them our vassal and after that we went on to pew Brandenburg as well all while being allied to some other electors which enabled us to be elected emperor of the Holy Roman Empire and then finally we took some provinces over here from Austria in the Tyrol area and then PU'd them as well and by this point in the game you should have the Palatinate, Köln, Brandenburg and Austria as your subjects for sure and if you've been lucky you may have gotten Hungary and Bohemia along with Austria if they PU'd them and maybe even Burgundy as well. So four to seven subjects depending on what your situation was. Of course by this point we're a super super strong nation where the HRE Emperor you may have passed a couple of reforms, Austria may have passed a couple of reforms everyone should be voting for you in my case they're actually not since i have an heiress right here but i will get rid of her and once i get an heir people will start voting for me you should have a ton of manpower and like i said strength and noble privileges isn't even necessary you can go with curtail as well you should be super super rich i have about 1500 ducats in my treasury i have been building buildings during all of this time and you should have been doing the same as we can see i've built up a bunch of production buildings here in the high value trade goods i got a couple of churches going as well marketplaces in all the center of trade and Eshuri provinces and by this point you should have also dev the gold mine and all that you took from Austria up to 10. We're making a nice income from gold as well. Right now I'm making 21 ducats a month. I don't think I have any loans. I don't so that's awesome and by this point you're a super super strong nation. You may even be on the great powers list. I am the seventh greatest power in my case. You should be eighth or maybe you could be sixth or fifth depending on what PUs you have gotten. After this point we'll continue to expand in the same regions we've already been expanding in. We've already gotten all all of our subjects through our mission trees but now with diplomatic ideas we can royal marry everyone that's lacking an heir up here of course these are insignificant nations but let's say someone like Denmark maybe didn't have an heir we already have the Wittelsbach dynasty we can easily enforce our union over them and get Norway and Sweden along with them as well so if you've already done that if you're a more experienced player which of course you wouldn't need a guide for that but some of you may have been able to get Denmark Norway and Sweden as a junior partner as well of course you can can't get them randomly since a nation with junior partners can't become a junior partner in event but you can declare on them and some stuff like that and you might be doing that same thing later after this point since we finished our pu missions you will focus on the missions that give you perma claims and conquering the areas that need to be conquered like some stuff over here in northern italy and southern germany provinces over here so you can connect yourself with your subjects you may have a bigger portion of the netherlands if you've gotten burgundy but if not you're going to be conquering all of this manually and you'll continue to expand in and around the HRE. Of course, by now you're super, super strong, but you can definitely get even more powerful allies to help you out. I have France in my case. You may have Spain, you may have Poland, you may have Denmark. It's totally up to you. Of course, later down the line, you can form the nation of Germany. This isn't something you strictly want to focus on, but you can totally do it. You can play the HRE game if you want to remove the centers of reformation when they pop out, continue to advance down the HRE reforms, go down the centralized route, form the HRE, form Germany or stay as Bavaria it's totally up to you what you do after this point because you're already one of the most powerful nations in the world by having three electors under our thumb and us being an elector ourselves we will always hold the majority and we will always be elected HRE Emperor 
And of course, if you are going down the HRE route, the fact that you have Holn subjugated will cost you Imperial Authority. So after some time, you will want to annex Holn and give the electorship to one of your boys, one of your allies, preferably a small nation that will always vote for you. That way you won't have to deal with the Imperial Authority penalty of having a vassal elector. For our first two idea groups, we took diplomatic and offensive ideas. For your third idea group, I recommend taking religious if you want to go down the HRE route and pass all those reforms and stuff like that. But if not, I recommend economic. So one of those two for your third idea group, depending on what your goal is, playing the HRE game or not. And for your fourth idea group, you should take another mill idea group, preferably quality or something like that. But if you don't think it gives enough army bonuses, since you don't have a lot of boats, you can totally go with something like quantity or defensive, even though quantity isn't really needed. And after the first four idea groups, the rest of them are totally up to you. This is what we took for our first three government reforms. Of course, the second one is up to you, like I said. For tier four, you should take meritocratic recruitment. For tier five, you should take general estates. Swap to royal decree when absolutism comes around. If you max out over 100 absolutism, you can swap back to general estates. For tier six, you should take letasemoi. And for tier seven, you should take political absolutism. But once again, if you max out over 100 absolutism, you can totally swap the legislative houses for four admin policies instead of three. And like I said, by around the 1490s, if you got lucky with alliances, or by around the 1500s, your realm should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities, or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel, and you can continue playing as Bavaria from this state forward. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash redhawklive, and if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel, link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot, and if you want to see more guides like this, or more UFO videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button, so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today, and join the Discord, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time, with another EU4 video.